this is this, you know, and they say, you know, so you, you have to pay the t lawyers, you have to pay uh, taxes, and then you have this woman from Chicago. This woman, listen to this, if you haven't heard about her already. I'm not going to give her name out, it's not important. But a woman claims that she figured out, <laughs> like all the rest of us, where the treasure is. And while she was figuring out where the treasure was, someone was hacking her computer and he was taunting her that he was hacking her and he would even send her private messages or text messages and he would say, nah, 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 nah. I'm, I'm watching where you're going to go. And he got her solved. She's convinced that guy is the finder and she's convinced that she doesn't know who he is, but she's convinced the finder is that guy because, of course, she knew where the solve was and he got there. And Finn isn't saying who the finder is, so in her mind, Finn is protecting the guy who hacked her computer. All right, are you keeping up with this? She doesn't even know who the guy is who hacked her, but she's supposedly suing Finn. Finn has gotten hit with all these crazy-ass lawsuits. And other stuff, too. And I still say, I find it very interesting that all of, when you see all of this stuff going on in the background, for this fine to happen when it did, I would think Mr. Finn would say he's happy. Now, he claimed in an interview, he said, well, I'm kind of happy and I'm kind of sad. It's over. I'd be so happy. It goes back to what I said earlier. When, uh, I guess, K-Pro said, well, did you, are you, would you do it again? And he said, no. I don't know why he'd say he's even sad at all. His family has been through hell with this. They've had a man break in. They had his daughter, had a gun on a guy. I mean, they've had people stalk them. I think one of his granddaughters was stalked. I mean, they have been through hell, in my personal opinion, their family. I would think they're all just going, oh, thank God, thank God, thank God, it's over. I would just think, and I would think he'd feel that way too, but there's this thing about Finn with publicity, and we'll get into that a little later. Dale Neitzel, for a while there, I'm just extrapolating on what I'm reading, he wasn't that happy with the way this was being handled. And, of course, we know Dale Neitzel is the one that runs the Forrest Finn website and and they're good friends, and they've known each other for years. Um, all of these people know Finn, uh, whether it's uh, AGK or Kalazar or K-Pro or Dale Neitzel or Jenny Kyle. These are all like the founders, if you will, to me, of the whole community of searchers. And I think for them, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that they considering him a friend, which I think they all do, and certainly someone they know personally, as opposed to someone like me who went out of his, well, not out of his way, I just never went to a Finn Marie or tried to email him or anything. The only time I ever emailed Finn, I emailed him one time way back in the beginning. Someone had just died, and uh, we have seven death, deaths now attributed to the Forest Finn treasure hunt. Someone had just died, and I said, Mr. Fenn, this was such a stupid email, I said, Mr. Fenn, you don't know me, but I'm about to go out and look at it, and I just got a, a cat sitter, so please do not call off the, the treasure hunt, because this person died. And of course, he didn't call off the treasure hunt, and of course, he never mailed me back. If he even read it, he went, just got a cat sitter. Yeah, okay, great. So Dale said, you know, I hope he puts closure to this. He said, um, people want to know if they were close. That is a recurring thing I'm hearing over and over and over from watching the blogs and the videos people are putting out and have put it out since uh, the 6th when he announced it was found. And then after the photos came out. That's the big thing. Where was it? Because people are just not going to, I'm just convinced people are not going to rest easy on this until there is enough information for people to, I mean, I guess, again, I'm going back to this thing I just saw uh, K-Pro and Kalazar do, where K-Pro was talking about people were virtually on their, I mean, very, very emotionally 
disturbed about the thing being found. I had my few days of feeling kind of glum. That would be it. That would be a perfect word for it. I felt glum. First of all, I wasn't going to go out on my treasure hunt this year out to, to uh, the Rockies. I mean, I could, of course, but now it seems kind of pointless. And it's a nice area to visit, but if I was going to go anywhere, I'd probably want to go to Dinosaur National Monument and go camping. By the way, Dinosaur National Monument had a ranger that came out and said, Thank God it's over! Thank God it's over! Because he, he, all the, Remember one of the guys who died out there? You had the guys that went in in February. They were a 60-something-year-old man, a 50-something-year-old man. I think they went in in February, and then they had to be rescued, and they went back in in March? I could have this all wrong. And they were near the South Wild Mountain, which was actually part of my solve for that, uh, because North Wild Mountain and South Wild Mountain was no place for the meek. I had this thing that curved around. It was like... Uh, the end is ever growing nigh meant that you were going from North Wild Mountain to South Wild Mountain, and that was and then that took you into Pool Creek, which is in a dinosaur national monument area. So they're real happy. I guess they've had a lot of searchers in that dinosaur national monument, and of course, uh, one of the two died back. I, I think it was March, and the the sixty year old guy surprisingly was the one who survived, and the other guy, the fifty or something, he died. That's just one of seven. I know, folks, I'm kind of going around and all over the place. I don't care. It's, it's Like I said, it's a lot of information that I've had to deal with since it was declared found. So I'm trying the best I can to kind of grab at things when they occur to me. He says, over the years, one of the ideas that people on the blog keep circling back to is the idea that if they found Fen's treasure, they would take a little something out for themselves keep it quiet, then put it back without disclosing the location. That way they would save everyone a bunch. I don't know. That just seems stupid. All right. So there's some ideas. Now, this was an article. All right, so that was some ideas. This was an article that I found very interesting right after I had six videos done. This is by a guy named Dukapil. He's a guy who writes for Inside Edition. And this was my seventh video was based on what he has to say, and of course then I ended up deleting them, keeping them all private. He says, it was to the disappointment of many that wealthy blah blah blah, uh, the, the treasure was found. Uh, Dukapil said, okay, Dukapil stayed at Fenn's compound in 2012. He was a reporter at the time, or maybe he still is, for CBS magazine, or CBS. So he goes in 2012, and he said at the time, Fenn was, quote, dying for the publicity. At the time, he'd written the book Thrill of the Chase two years prior, and the only people who had mentioned it were little publications or an airline magazine. Fenn had no credibility as somebody who actually had a lot of collectible items, a.k.a. the treasure, and who would do something as crazy as invite people to find it. So when I called, Fenn was like, please come, I'll give you all the time you want. The story was published in Newsweek. It was then that people learned of the chest full of gold and jewels stashed in a secret location and that clues were in the Fenn's book. This article that this Dukapil wrote put Fenn's book and his treasure hunt in the national spotlight. Since then, many people have risked their life and some have even died. Listen to this. Dukapil... CBS correspondent who stayed with Forrest Fenn for a week in his house says the real reason why I don't think the treasure has really been found is because Forrest Fenn told me his plan was to entomb himself along with the treasure. 
I think the treasure is in a location where an older man can still get to it and crawl or insert himself in and alongside the chest. I mean, that's how it was explained to me. Well, we know that Forrest Ben has said he can't get back to the chest because he's too old and decrepit. At one time he said, I can't walk 50 yards without having to sit down and breathe, take oxygen or get oxygen. And he has said, you know, his, he can't even retrieve it because he can no longer physically get to it. So Duke Capil says, you have a guy who's been collecting archaeology his whole life, is so in love with it, he's hatched a plan to make himself part of that record for all time and invite the public in to try and find it and his bones, he continued. He is confident it is not a hoax. I think when he says hoax here, he means the chest was put out there because there are a lot of people still saying maybe you never even put it out there and this whole thing's a scam. I mean, some people are saying maybe you never even put it out there and it's a scam, and other people are saying Forrest Fenn has had it retrieved for himself, or maybe he had it retrieved to give to his grandkids. Um, maybe it would free up money he had for the grandkids that now he and Peggy could use because they can have the treasure chest, and after he's gone, they can say, oh, we have the treasure Who knows? I don't know. But this Duca pill says something in here that is absolutely woke me up. Duke Capel says something here that is really amazing. And it's just two lines in this whole article, but it really caught my attention. Duke Capel said that the photos that were released aren't proof that the treasure has been found. Noting the pictures are undated, taken in an unnamed location, and get this, the photos that have Fenn in them are from before he buried the treasure. So this guy Ducapil is saying Forrest Fenn, I guess he has seen these two photos before Forrest Fenn even buried the treasure. Did he see them in the week he spent with Forrest Fenn? I don't know, but that's what he says in this article. Okay, so those are the photos that have Forrest Fenn in them. Then there's the one photo that doesn't, which is the chest, which looks like it was found on the ground and has the, and there is that funny caption that says it's on a trail. <laughs> okay, getting back to the timing of this and keeping that in mind about, because I mean, if Forrest Fenn is going to put out three photos and two of them are photos from 10 years ago before he put the chest out, maybe he was looking through it before he decided to obviously put it out. Why wouldn't he say that? Could be totally innocent. Could be, in Forrest Fenn's mind, he's just saying, look, here's the chest after it's been retrieved. This is the photo I got from the guy who found it. And then here are a couple of photos just showing me going through it before I ever put it out and wearing the, nur the turquoise bracelet. But why would he not say that? Okay, something, um, we have something that happened in March, and this is where it starts to get interesting. We have a lawsuit. We had a lawsuit by a guy, I forget who his name was. He had sued Fenn, and right before, and, and the court threw it out. And he claims that right before Forrest Fenn announced the find, that he had just resubmitted the uh, the lawsuit. The lawsuit he had put in about Fenn misleading him and stuff uh, supposedly was thrown out on technicalities. And so he had had it rewritten, the lawsuit, and had resubmitted it to the court. And he claims that like literally a couple of few days before Forrest Fenn announced the treasure was found that um, Fenn had gotten the papers for the lawsuit. I don't know if that's true or not. We also have the crazy lady. I think the crazy lady, um, that lawsuit is... No, that, that lawsuit I think is still going on. Then we have another lawsuit. Oh, that's right. David Hansen a Colorado Springs man sued Fenn in 2018, claiming Fenn gave misleading information about the treasure's location. 
then filed a counterclaim saying the allegations were unsubstantiated and inflammatory. Court documents say both sides have agreed to drop the case. Okay, so there's another court case, but that one got dropped, and so Finn should be happy about that. So we have court cases going on, which are never fun because even if they're completely crazy, you have to at least spend a little bit of money getting them dismissed. Then we had in March, March, then we had in March something. Then we had in March something that was very tragic. Um, listen to this article. Most early reports in the national and international press accepted Fenn's assertion without question. This is written right after the announcement that treasure had been found. But over the next week, doubts began to creep into coverage when the promised photos failed to appear. Of course, the photos have now appeared. Two of which might be 10 years old, one which may be uh, the, the chest that has been found. Against this backdrop, a GoFundMe page... Uh, let me go on to part three. 